So today we're going to try to answer a very popular historical question. What if Germany won World War I? Would fascism and socialism still rise up in the 1930s, or would our world be completely changed forever? So that's what we're going to find out today in probably one of the best AI-only battles I think I'll ever do inside of Hearth of Iron 4 because I have been waiting for a mod to give me a situation like this with a whole bunch of new countries that turns everything upside down in this time period. As you can see, it's 1936, and this is kind of an alternative history scenario where Germany wins World War I. So I think the biggest changes in the map come out of what the French and what the British have lost. As you can see, the Germans have huge control over Africa, uh, Southeastern Asia, um, and now, you know, obviously the Australians and the Canadians are no longer uh, under control of the British. So that's all going to play pretty big roles. Uh, this mod adds a ton of new political parties inside of each country, uh, a bunch of new events, 18, uh, more than 18 new focus trees, tons and tons of things, and uh, this is going to be a really, really interesting scenario that we get to play out here. I think the Italian Peninsula also looks very fun. We've got the Italian Federation, uh, and uh, we actually do still have, I think, so I, I, I kind of answered the question in the very beginning a little bit already. Socialism still will rise up out of a lot of these countries, uh, but there will be other political parties that will uh, kind of, you know, authoritarian uh, democracies are kind of a big deal in this mod too. That will be very interesting. The Italian Federation is one of those. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a lot of, a lot of syndicates. Syndic, I can't I don't even know. That's a, that's a bit, that's a weird word. Syndical lists, syndical lists, something like that. And we still have the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire never collapsed. So that's still a, a really, really kind of big deal. Um, we have uh, obviously the Austri uh, Austrians and the uh, Kingdom of Hungary. So this is going to be fun. And uh, I've kind of progressed the, the video a little bit, the campaign, to see our first war. So the first war will be between Afghanistan and the Dominion of India. Obviously, India was uh, was separated into three different regions after the Germans won World War One. And uh, so, yeah, we have the, I, I don't really know, that's very interesting, the Radical Socialists, which is kind of a big deal. There's lots and lots of those kind of political parties rising up around the world around this time period at 1936. Um, we've got kind of the southern part of India, which is, what is this, Princely, Princely Federation, interesting, authoritarian democracy, and then the Dominion of India, which is uh, kind of friendly with all of the uh, former, what is that word? There's, uh, there's a, for, yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about, the colonies of, of Britain, Br Great Britain and things like that. Okay, so yeah, there's, there's a war going on, and uh, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think is going to happen? I don't think I want to ask, like, what country is going to do the best, I mean, because who really knows? The factions that form are going to be really all over the place, and actually, we can see there's a few factions that have already formed. We've got the Entente here between the former uh, puppets of the UK. So Canada, Australia, the Dominion of India, which might collapse here to Afghanistan. We're going to have to wait and see. Obviously, I haven't even covered Eastern Asia and how much of a mess that is. Uh, we've got the German colony here, and then we've got the, uh, the Qin Empire, Japan kind of reaching into uh, Chinese territory. It's going to be a huge mess, and I'm really, really excited. But uh, yeah, the Entente is doing pretty well. And then, uh, I don't know, we're going to just call this the German faction. And uh, of course, the Third International. Interesting. So I think the French will be able to pull, hopefully, the, for the French's sake, uh, they'll be able to pull in some some friends. Uh, but anyways, okay, let's go on speed 5 and kind of see what happens. So, uh, I've done a few tests with this mod. That's why I'm saying that this is going to be a really exciting AI-only battle. A lot of different things happen. A lot of crazy things happen. Again, World War II in this world probably will break out around the same time period it traditionally does in a normal Hearts of Iron 4 game. So, around like the 1940 uh, region is probably when we'll see something huge happen with the uh, the German faction. Okay, so the Soviet Soviets have uh, they've had their revolution. That's what I figured. So we will see a lot of sort of fascism and so uh, socialism kind of rise up, even though the Germans won and they have all this territory and things like that. So uh, Russia declared war in the Soviet Union. We'll see how long they survive. The Soviets, I think, will have some luck. I think, holy crap, I have not seen this happen before. <laughs> all right, so automatically jumping off the bat, all the tests I've done inside of this mod, I've never seen Siberia break away. So uh, I'm guessing these two are going to ally to each other, Siberia and Soviet Russia, right? No, because they haven't declared. Oh, so you, I think you released them on purpose. Oh, and now we have also uh, done Don Cuban Union. Is that what the cup? Cu cu Cuban? Cuban? I don't think Cuban. 
sounds about right. Anyways, I know I sound very stupid right now. I don't- <laughs> My pronunciation is so bad, I apologize. I apologize. Okay, so Russia just broke apart within the first three months. That's exciting. Uh, I would not be surprised if I- the test that I've done, the United States definitely breaks apart as well. So, uh, yeah, maybe it'd be a good idea to wait to the end of this video before you, uh, leave your predictions on what you think is going to happen inside of this mod where Germany has won World War One. Okay, so we no longer get the effects of guaranteed holdings over private individuals, something that has to do with the German Empire. I am viewing as the German Empire, so we'll see how that goes. Um, now, do you have any friends, Russia, besides Siberia, who I think you intentionally released, and you don't like uh, different regions of the map, kind of modern-day Kazakhstan here, right? Somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and view as the Soviet Union. I do want to see how they're doing. Now, here's the thing. The Soviet Union looks small, but they actually have a, a, a hard chunk of Russia, a good chunk of Russia, that has a lot of power. So, uh, I, I think that they could last a little bit here. And uh, we've got Mongolia. Maybe uh, maybe we have the descendants of Genghis Khan going to do their thing. Oh, wow, that's going to be an interesting one. How is uh, Afghanistan doing? Okay, Afghanistan is not doing very well. And I think I should call them the... Uh, e Emirates of Afghanistan? Oh, they already they already fell. There you go. Oh, they white pieced. Or or did they? No, nope, yep, they did white piece for the most part. All right, well there you go. Dominion of of India still looking strong. They have kind of modern day Pakistan and northern uh, India at the moment. I really want to see what will happen with these two. Russia's fighting two different fronts, so I don't know how this is going to make it a little bit easier for the Soviets. Uh, usually the Soviets don't do well in this mod if it's just them by themselves versus all of Russia. But Russia just lost a ton of power. Um, obviously, I think Siberia still... Well, they're probably still over here, actually. It's probably safe to say they are still over here. Let's look in a little bit deeper, see who's supporting them. I bet you they could be receiving a few units, possibly. No, no, I don't think the... Ne never mind. The Europeans don't... Oh, are they in a faction too? I don't think the Western Europeans want to uh, interfere. Oh yeah, so there is kind of an anti-Russian uh, faction that is forming. Oh, did you leave too? Maybe you did. Yeah, did Georgia leave? Which uh, Georgia is, I'm guessing, radically, yep, radical socialists as well. So we might see kind of an interesting Eastern European faction form out of uh, the destruction of Russia if this does in fact happen. Let me check how these guys are doing. How are you guys doing? Okay, well, you just got a bunch of units in circle. That's not that's not too well. Uh-oh. Oh, you guys might collapse. I think you just got too many units encircled, so they might be done here. Where's their capital? Here's their capital. Yeah, once they get a hold of that, it's, uh, it's over. And the Soviets are going to be on their own, which is kind of a big deal. Let's see here. Who do the, social, who do the Soviets like? Could they get something with Finland? Could they get... Oh, no, they hate Finland. <laughs> the Kingdom of Finland does not like them, which they are a... Uh, uh, autocrats, basically. The Kingdom of Finland actually just took a chunk out of Russia, didn't they? Yeah, that that is not their traditional borders there, Drew. That is a good assumption. Russia is just losing so much power already. They, uh, they... Wow. That's not, that's not doing too good. Now, one thing I love about this mod is that we finally have things happen in South America. I feel like... South America is forgotten so much, and I was so upset about that. I mean, I wish there's, I hope that there's a future mod or expansion that comes out for South America in Hearts of Iron, uh, where more exciting things happen. But uh, we will see a few things happen out of the uh, Southern Hemisphere in the New World. Uh, they are social conservatives, and we have La Plata here. Oh my gosh, La Plata, an authoritarian democracy. Yeah, so La Plata usually begins, forces uh, the hand of, of Brazil and Bolivia and things like that. Did you just change your... Yeah, you just became populist, didn't you? National pop... Oh my gosh, right in front of us. Look at that. There you go. So that, that's what I'm saying. There's all these new political parties, uh, all these new things that could happen. How is the U.S. still doing? I guess they like the uh, Dominion of Canada. They do not like France, though. Very bad opinion of France at the moment. We've got Herbert Hoover leading here. And, uh, okay, so they did, in fact, fall. Let me make sure that I am still observing. Yes, okay. Still observing. This time as, uh, as, as France still. Actually, we should go back to Germany because they really do hold a lot of power here. Obviously, they hold some of the, the, the biggest power. And I didn't even talk about how they have all of this huge alliance over Ukraine, which I, I, I again, I apologize for not mentioning. We've got, uh, geez, who is this? Modern day Belarus, right? Yeah, something like that. And then we have uh, all this power over the Baltic states too. 
Well, Lithuania, not power over them, but yeah, they are allied to uh, the Germans. And uh, if we go into the... Actually, we, ha we should check out the German political party. Oh, they are just authoritarian democracy, basically. Anything interesting? Anything cool in here? Nothing really. Okay. By the way, if anyone was wondering, North America is... Uh, well, actually, I don't know about Mexico. Mexico, social democrats, and then the U.S. are all uh, market liberals. Yeah, market market liberals, which might definitely change. Oh, social conservatives. Never mind. You, you guys changed. Well, the political parties will uh, continue to kind of uh, alternate here, I think, a little bit. Now, will the Soviet... Will Soviet Russia get any help out of any more... They need someone else to join that faction. Maybe Kingdom of, of Finland, uh, maybe the Kingdom of Ukraine. They all could really, really help here. Let's go ahead and view back as Soviet Soviet Russia. Yeah, they, they really don't have the, the troops to push forward here. Now, what Soviet Russia could have hoped for is maybe getting up an alliance with... Uh, oh, here we go. Bam. United States have declared war on the combined syndicates of America. So, America is in a civil war. Bam. The Rust Belt has just broken apart. Oh, man. Oh, we're going <laughs> to... Oh, we're going to get some interesting comments in this video now. Rust Belt. And then there goes the uh, the American Union states. And, yep, the Deep South just uh, just rose up. Oh, and there's the Pacific. Oh, I have to... I, man, I've got to go for the home team, baby. i got to go for the home team. We've got the, Paci the Pacific states of America. Okay. And the Northeast just gave all of their territory to Canada. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just straight up joined Canada. They were like, yeah, you know what? We're not gonna die, fight a civil war. We're just gonna join Canada. All right. Well, that's uh, that's pretty interesting. That is pretty fun. How many wars are, is the uh, the U.S. now trying to keep together? They're not fighting the Pacific states of America just yet. I wonder if Canada will invade the U.S. now. Maybe we'll see something like that. We no longer get the effects of uh, okay. Let me go into and view as uh, as the U.S. and see how this goes. Oh, okay, never mind. So you didn't join Canada. You came back out as New England. Okay, so New England has formed. So right now, if you all join in, it's it's likely I think you could stop the U.S. Um, the U.S. could definitely get its get its territory back. I've seen it happen before, um, but I think New England and, and the Pacific states of America are going to need to all join in. I mean, we've got a capital here, and then, yeah, we've got a capital here in Georgia. Atlanta is the capital of the American Union. Uh, we've got 12%, only 12% world tension, but there's all this stuff going on, which is pretty funny. All these things are happening, and uh, only 12% world tension. I guess it just goes to show you that there's there's lots and lots of things that will, uh, lots and lots of wars. Oh, yeah, we haven't even checked on this. How's Mongolia doing? Mongolia is doing pretty well, it looks like. Yeah, they've expanded quite a bit. Good for them. That'd be awesome to see, like, Mongolia rise up. Maybe form something with, uh, Siberia. Ooh, you better be careful, though. You are not making friends. And, uh, Japan will, of course, be really, really interesting. Well, here's the thing. What is, what is Siberia? Siberia is, uh, populist. Whereas Russia is populist as well. For the most part. I mean, they're really divided. Holy crap. Yeah, they're all over the place. Oh, bam. There goes the only Soviet alliance they had with us, with Socialist Republic of Georgia. Yep, that's not too good for them. Oh, but the Soviets are pushing forward. Again, they're gonna, they need Kazan. They take Kazan, I think Russia falls. And then we'll just have this hugely divided, uh, just this massive divide right here between the, the continents of Asia and, and Europe, basically. That would be pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, maybe I should show this off because this is really interesting. The uh, if we go into the German Empire and view some of their national focus, they've got a bunch. They've got a bunch of things that they can do. Um, I'll kind of just kind of scroll over everything, but yeah, it, it's obviously been completely overhauled for this mod. Um, this would be pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I think this is one of them that can they can start to grab all their full recovery. So they're still, I guess, recovering. I think they demilitarized after winning World War One. You know, I mean, time went by, obviously, just like the UK and the French did. I think that's something that that occurred. Oh my gosh, this looks. I I totally I totally forgot about North America, and I'm like, this is just this is all crazy right here. Uh, what what uh, we've got conservatives, I think, ruling here in the Pacific states, market liberals, social democrats, uh, in the South. Holy crap, just autocrats. Just, yeah, that's that's all it is right there. This is very divided here in New England, and the Rust Belt are uh, 
syndicalists, something like that. Austrian Empire has declared war on Hungary. Oh boy. Oh boy. A little bit of a, of a divide taking place here. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. But uh, as you can see, this is going to be an extremely interesting AI-only battle. Obviously, lots of different things happening. Ooh, Hungary and the Ottoman Empire like each other. I'm excited to see what the Ottomans do. Uh, it's only 1937, so we only made it a year into this mod. But uh, this will be interesting. Who does Germany like? Germany likes Austria. I think I should have... Duh, Drew. Duh. <laughs> yeah, so this will be uh, very, very fun. Again, let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think is going to happen? I have no idea. It's it's really hard to say, but uh, I would love to know who's gonna whose predictions will be right because uh, there's there's probably a lot of things that will uh, will occur that a lot of people will know about. Is this? Uh, oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize Ethiopia wasn't paying attention to Ethiopia. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. This looks like a really great start to an AI-only battle. I'm I'm so excited. I have waited, like I said, for a mod like this that really kind of completely overhauled the game and uh, and kept things exciting and fresh because we def desperately needed something like that in Hearts of Iron 4 to return to an AI-only battle like this. So very excited for the series, as you can see. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.